Nick here, Brevis says Customs. Today we're having a look at the new Fadus Hot End. Uh, this is the new Dragonfly, which is a little bit different to their old model, which we've reviewed before, which is we've been running it since we've reviewed it, and we've not had one clog or any issues with it at all. As you notice, the uh, heat block here, it runs long ways rather than outwards, which gives it, technically, anyway, it gives you a bigger um, melt zone, because of course all of this is going to be melt zone rather than going the other way. And in theory, it should give you a more equal heating because it's not. You think on a normal one, your, your heat um, cartridge runs sideways, so you're only really heating the center has got the direct heat. The rest of it's relying on sort of what's penetrating into the block itself, whereas this is going to be running the full length, which should give you much better heating results. Now, this just gives you an idea. This is a stock Ender 3 unit. As you can see, they mount up the same, but the heat breaks a little bit. Is a lot longer, it's about 10mm longer, and it's also um, wider as well. And also, they've included quite some fun little stickers here, which is nice, cool, cool to see. I don't know if that's just because this is a sort of a pre production unit, but last time I got some cool stuff with their um, other hoodie, and I got a hoodie and a few other bits. And also, this really cool calendar, which we turned it around, We've got little photos, their little logo man on each, each month. It's quite a cool little thing, you know. Once again, I don't know if they give these out normally, but if they don't, these would be something that, you know, they'd be quite cool to buy. So, obviously with the end being longer than normal, we've had to redesign a hot end um, cooling fan setup. We'll just pull this off Thingiverse. We'll put the link in the description for this one here and also the original. Um, we've slotted the holes in here. So we moved the original holes up 10mm and then we've sort of slotted it down 3mm to give you a little bit of adjustment to get the height right now obviously some people don't like these sort of um, cooling fans because it does block a lot of the nozzle and it does make it a lot harder to record any time lapses with it uh, we've been running this on our other end of three machine for a while now without the BL touch mount obviously we're gonna put this on our TiVo Tornado which is essentially the same platform as an end of three just a bigger footprint so it's not really any different so let's get this installed on the machine and have a play Right, so we've installed the hot end and we've done a few tests here. Um, we've done a couple of the stock setup and a couple of the full metal. So we'll start with our stock setups. This one's done in PETG. Um, we picked these little rabbits because of the fact that they've got movable parts and also coming up to Easter. Um, so this is the stock unit here. As you can see, I've marked it on here. It's printed clean. There's been no string in between these bits. It moves nice and free. So we wanted to pick something with a bit of movement so we would pick up any stringing on the full metal hot end, which a lot of people stay, you know, want to stay away from them printing these sort of materials. Um, so this has come out good. There's a little bit of the top surface isn't, isn't perfect. Um, and just in around here, you can see it hasn't printed great. Um, a little bit of that is because obviously running cool, you don't really run any cooling fan on a PETG. Um, but other, other than that, it's come out pretty good. And then this one's just done in a PLA. And it's turned out great. Obviously PLA's got good cooling. All the sides have come out nice. Um, nice and free. No string in between the parts. Right, so we'll start with the PLA one on our full metal hot end. And you get a couple of little bits of wispy stringing, which you can't, you know, by the time you run over the hot gun, uh, heat gun with that, you won't see it. The sides have come out very clean. And around the whiskers and the top surface layer is perfect. There's no imperfections. Um, so this has come out really nice. And then the PETG one. Now this one, we was expecting sort of similar results, but for some reason we've actually got a nice, a lot cleaner um, finish on the thing. We've run the same temp. Uh, we haven't calibrated the E-steps or anything different. Uh, all we've done is the PID test, which we did a um, PID test on both of them before we did it to the same temperature with a fan on to try to eliminate any sort of differences between the filaments. Now we wanted to go a little bit more in detail, we wanted to try to do some ABS but obviously this machine sitting in the shed and it's starting to cool down here and it's sort of, I'd try to do these overnight, um, but yeah it's sort of, it, we had a couple of goes and they warped so all in all, I would really recommend this actually, you do, you lose a little bit of your Z height but it's, I think they're eight and a half mil is what they claim, sort of I said ten but it's about eight and a half mil that you lose. 
All right, so this will be available with three different nozzle choices. So there's going to be your normal brass, uh, there'll be a hardened steel, and then there's also going to be a plated, I think it's a plated copper. So you'll be able to choose what's going to suit you. We've been running one, our one's got the hardened steel nozzle, which some people, you know, they, they claim you have a lot of issues with trying to print lower temp like PLA. and But we printed this sort of, we did bump it up five degrees, um, obviously because we didn't have the silicone sock or... And also because it's hard and steel, steel doesn't sort of transfer the heat as nice. We've made a few couple of little changes to our hot end design, our cooling fan. We just sort of had to take a couple of notches out just to... We had some issues with our limit switch, not quite hitting where it needed to be. But it's... yeah, the, the other thing we had issues with is uh, routing the wire, sort of the heater cartridge wire. Because it comes straight up and down, it's sort of... it's hard to get it away from the heat sink. Uh, we've done our best job to sort of keep it away and to ensure that we've got good cooling and it, it seems to be all right so we've put the link in the description anyway for our hot end design which will fit obviously we've got it on a tevo tornado it's going to fit your end of three fit your cr10 and any other model that's got the same sort of mounting plate so it'll cover a variety of models so the only thing that we adjusted from our factory settings that we've been running is we've just adjusted the retraction to the suit full metal hot end so we've gone from about, I think we were running about 3.5mm on our setup to we've taken it down to 2.5mm and, and it's pretty good. We could probably fine tune that a little bit more but we just stuck with what we knew was working on our uh, old Dragonfly hot end which we haven't adjusted much at all and it's been performing flawlessly. I believe they are doing a special at the moment on some of the early release ones. I think they're going to do some custom engraving and I believe they're going to do some limited colors. I think there were some blacks and some silvers rather than just the blue. And also they will have the silicone socks on them and once they're released. Obviously this is a pre-release model. The silicone sock that they will be including will be good up to 350 degrees which is going to cover pretty much any filament most people are going to print. Now obviously it's going to, it's good PLA PETG prints that. But it's going to print your nylon carbons, um, your even your peak. Obviously, you've got to pick the appropriate nozzle, which I got the three choices that I said about earlier. So you're going to pick what's going to suit you best. Um, personally, I would stick with the steel one. The steel one's still going to wear out with your carbon over time anyway. It's not a it's not a tungsten nozzle, but you should get pretty good life out of it. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video, and it might be of help to you. Um, like I said, I'm going to keep printing more on this and I'll probably do an update video later just to let you know how I've got on if I have any issues because obviously this has sort of been done over the last week. It might, you know, some nozzles may work good for a week and then you have issues. I've had other full metal ones which I've had, I've run for a couple of days and they've performed flawlessly and then they've just had issues even with low retraction. It's just constant clogging. But these are high-end quality build, as you can tell just by taking them apart. They've taken their time, they've thought about how everything goes together, and they're a top-notch unit. So, until the next video, have a good one.